I think that internet is such a cool thing because it brings us all these stories. It brings us all these quirky, scary, wonderful stories. And it impacts businesses, countries, industries, politicians, kids, everyone. The next thing I'll show is uh, a story that uh, impacted a lot as well. Uh, so for 50 years, Shell, uh, which is, a, is an oil and gas company, and Lego, which makes toys, they made a partnership where Shell has used Lego and Lego has cooperated in creating uh, understanding on what Shell is doing. This has been going on for 50 years. Greenpeace then created this movie. Okay, you see this movie, and so did lots of other people. And very soon after, Lego canceled their partnerships with Shell. Stop here for a moment. How many of you are international energy experts that can have an educated take on whether it's good or bad to drill for oil in Antarctica, based on not emotions and anecdotal evidence, but actually because you know a lot about this sector? Raise a hand. You understand what I mean? There's not a lot of people, but this is the power of communication in a transparent arena. The fact is, which is really, really challenging, if you look at energy, the energy we use right now, even if we invent as fast as we do and come up with things that are super in other energy sources, we're still going to need four times as much energy 20 years from now than we have, and we don't have the energy solutions. So the question is not, can we take away oil and we stop drilling, and then nuclear and solar and everything else will fix it. That is not realistic. It's not based on facts, right? But with the power of storytelling that Greenpeace is doing right now, they change minds of people. So whether if, if it's factual or not, and I'm not an industry expert either in oil, it changed hearts and minds of people. And never before has someone with the skill to tell stories and a computer been able to impact the world as much as now. And this is interesting in many dimensions. It's interesting because your company could be completely rolled over by somebody with a good story against you, whether it's true or not, just if they tell good stories. And on the other hand, you, if you want to affect something, you now have the power to do so in a very powerful way. And I think that transparency ultimately creates better companies, better leaders, better criminals, or whatever it might be. Uh, so the next panel, we're going to venture into how you can use storytelling as a tool for driving a better society. And I'd like to start out with a movie, Sundance winning movie trailer, uh, of an example of where you take an issue and would you take a great narrative and how you can then use that to create impact. Please roll the video. The 
these people, as much as they are invisible in life, they're invisible in death. It's very hard to identify them. Nobody's out there searching for them. Diane Crystal was definitely an atypical case. Who's this person? We don't have any report of somebody who was missing that had those tattoos. We're trying to see if somebody knows this person and try to ID them. En vida era considerado invisible, un ilegal. Ahora en la muerte es un misterio por resolver. Nunca podré entender la dimensión de los peligros que enfrentó. Solo puedo tratar de recorrer sus pasos. People sneaking across the border. To my mind, the problem is all economic. The American capitalist economy needs blue collar labor. For me, it's very frustrating knowing that somebody had a dream, but they ended up being a number, a statistic. Come up all the way from New York, Lina Sirastava. Very welcome. Hi, thank you. Hey. Welcome to Stockholm. Thank Two you kisses, so much. that's great. Absolutely. Good start. Uh, so, uh, what did we see here? We saw the trailer for a movie called Who is Diane Cristal? Quien es Diane Cristal? Which is a movie about the US Mexico border and the um, death, the, un the effort to identify and repatriate dead migrants who die on our side of the border. The reasons they leave and the journey they take from Central America through Mexico into America. And, you, and your work is that you use strong storytelling, yeah. transmedia, and narrative to affect social change. Exactly. So I work with people, I work primarily with filmmakers, with institutions, with nonprofits, anybody who has the need to tell a good story to show the human cost of our policies and our decisions, and how you translate that into direct action in communities. And what happens, for instance, with, with a story like that? How do you then take it to, to other channels and to create impact? Sure, so for this one, we, we, the, the story is a documentary, and the man who died in this movie was in 2010. Since that time, we've been putting together a social impact strategy that mirrors the narrative in the film. And what we did is we took um, short content, um, infographics, uh, content from nonprofits who are partners, and created a transmedia platform online and offline that seeds direct, relevant, community-driven action. So it's a strategic planning um, effort that's about two years and two years of implementation and direct action on the ground. But you've also worked in India. You worked with, yeah. with, with uh, uh, kids in brothels in India. Yeah, so the first movie that I ever worked on was a movie called Born Into Brothels, which I was the executive director of an organization called Kids With Cameras. And um, it's a movie about photography education for kids who are the children of sex workers in Calcutta, and how the education and the ability to engage in artistic expression changed their own worldview and allowed them to take more power over their own lives. Um, and we put together a cross-media engagement platform around that pre-social media, this is 2004. So we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have Twitter, but we, a we were able to put together this multimedia platform that engaged people in the children's stories and scale that around the world. And, and now you have all these new tools, you have this transparent yeah. arena. Uh, what are the opportunities for storytellers? You know, there are myriad opportunities. So what you can do if you're really trying to look at change, the first thing to ask yourself is what are we trying to change? It is all impact driven. So if you're in CSR, if you're in an institution like the World Bank, if you're in a nonprofit, or if you're a filmmaker or an artist, the first thing is what does the community need and what are we trying to change? And it should be an achievable goal. And then you start thinking, you start really analyzing the stories and the facts, but the human story and how you use that to make sure that the community is meeting its goals and that they, they have a voice in this entire process. But you can do it from many sectors. We are going to look at uh, some other sectors and yeah. we are going to invite Therese up, yeah. who is the co-founder of 
SIME Social Impact. Uh, SIME Social Impact, it's SIME's initiative where we gather non-profit organizations, social entrepreneurs, and corporates that are interested in driving change in society. So please, Therese, come join us. Please have a seat. Uh, and uh, last but not least, uh, we are going corporate and we're going big corporate. And we're going to invite somebody that represents a company that is driving profit and brand and everything that companies does. But they're doing that by being a social citizen. And that's Elin Wahlberg from Samsung. <laughs> so, uh, Please. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, so first of all, today uh, we've been having a, a Sime Social Impact Summit here uh, during uh, these days. Yeah. First question is, we changed names yeah. from Sime Nonprofit to Sime Social Impact. Yeah, we, we really want to mirror what we stand for, and that is to mix the two different uh, sectors and really see what impact you have when you collaborate across the two, the nonprofit, for profit, and I think nonprofit name is just not relevant anymore because that's not where we're going. We have to work together to get somewhere. So it's not about not making profit, it's about making social impact. Yeah, win-win uh, collaborations for both sectors. And how has it been? Uh, you've had workshops and discussed a lot of different topics and being a meeting place for these different uh, groups. Tell us, I haven't, I, I don't know because I've been here. No, it's been, no but it was actually, it's, it's a, I don't know what to say, but more than mind-blowing because we've done this for five years. And this is the first year where I come to my workshop, which I had the first workshop yesterday, and I was about for 50 people, I thought, mm -hmm. and I come to the, the grand area just outside Hasselback, and there's 150 people there, and I think they're going to all different kinds of workshops. And they all want to go to the time social impact workshop, which it was on um, doing well by good doing, uh, doing good by doing well with tech. And it's just, we had to move the whole thing outside, and I think it's the, fir it's the first time that so many people came to... Uh, do you think yeah, that so people care more? And do you think that companies care more? Yeah, I do. And I, I... Someone told me this the other day, which I really think is right, that humans are... We're flock animals. We belong in herds. And when we really see that the wolf is coming, we move together, and then you get this enormous change. And I think for... A few people have been moving over the years, but now you realize that climate change is real. Um, the world is not looking that good right now. We need to change. So people are like, I think the whole movement is on. Elin, uh, you come from a from, uh, background. You've been working with everything from, from uh, Queen Sylvia to nonprofits to, uh, to taking on the job leading Samsung's endeavors in corporate social citizenship. What is that and what does, Stanford, uh, what does Samsung stand for? Well, Samsung stands for technology and innovation, but also to contribute uh, to co-prosperity in society. So that's what I do. I've spent my life working for children and youth with a belief that uh, no other sector and no other mean than technology has such opportunity to make a significant positive impact in children's lives. So, you know, I have my dream job. I'm at Samsung. We are a world leader, amazing possibilities to, uh, to make a fantastic contribution. Um, I just I, um, made a call for action at the... Yeah, you had a yeah. workshop. <laughs> yeah. Tell, tell me about yeah. that, because, as again, I, I was at a parallel workshop, so I don't know yeah. what happened. Yeah, no, we had a, a workshop before and I was just stunned. There were so many people. We call it Hacking for a Better Society. Uh, the ones who are reading the tweets said, it's not really a workshop, it's, it's more of a panel, which is why, remember, Ola, when we were planning this, I said, we're going to have this, uh, the same uh, uh, conference, the summit. We're going to create all this feeling of uh, energy, of inspiration, of creativity. Mm -hmm. And then people feel like, oh, yes, I'm never going to go back and do things the way I used to do. Now I'm going to change the world. And then you go back and you get into your inbox with your emails, your meetings. They said, let's not make that happen. So what did I say? Remember that yeah. we're going to meet again? 
We're going to meet again in yeah. two weeks. In two weeks <laughs> at the Saime office. Uh, so we in launched this initiative at the workshop. Samsung has now a great initiative for the Nordics. We call it Everyone an Innovator, Everyone a Technology Leader. Uh, pretty much meaning that um, if we're going to live in a prosperous region here in the Nordics, we need to make sure that every young person uh, has uh, the possibility uh, to make use of their potential in a digital world. That means we need to really, really do all we can to support uh, young kids, their teachers, and young innovators. Because we need innovation and we need skills in the digital world. And when we're talking skills, it's not just IT skills. It's not programming. We need to think much wider. It's about human skills. We've talked, I saw some tweets, we need to talk about integrity. We need to talk about critical thinking. We need to talk about empathy. How are you empathetic in the digital world? And it's about innovation. But what, so, why? These are words that very seldom come from executives at large tech corporations. Yeah, why, why is that? Why is Samsung passionate for that? And I'm, I'm really curious what the drive is. You've yeah. decided to allocate an interesting chunk of your profit to becoming a better citizen. Mm -hmm. Why? What yeah. drives that? I think it's, you know, we are, first of all, I think we are really beyond why. Samsung is a really major company. We are part of society. We need to work with society to contribute to society. And it's also part of our vision. So we go back there. Perhaps we haven't um, communicated so much uh, about what we are doing. Uh, perhaps there has been... Um, you know, you wanting to have results and something to tell. And now we're ready, uh, so we're doing a lot. Uh, but we don't want to work alone. So we're asking you guys out here to openly innovate with us and take on this challenge. How can we create a better society in the Nordics for the next generation? Mm -hmm. Just one, because I asked the audience, and I thought that was funny. So is digital the future? What do you think they said? I certainly hope they said yes. Yes, and I said no. <laughs> Digital is not the future. The future are our children oh. <laughs> and the young people. So that's what we're going to strive for. That's how we can uh, make a better society. So think out of the box. We make fantastic products, tablets, mobile phones. You guys out there, you make content, you make distribution, you make media. Imagine if we release the force in this room. And when, what date do we meet and when? <laughs> November 25th, 2 o'clock, Saime office. They promised, Ulla promised. We'll send out an invitation. So anybody that wants to contribute. Yeah. Get your to, calendars. To, 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 being, to being part of this, you should really come. <laughs> And, this, and the funny thing, and the cool thing about this, and check her, call her bluff, check her cards, it's a no bullshit strong mm. commitment. And I want more mm. companies to do that. And I mm. want your help, Lena. What stories should we tell to get more companies to be fired up like this and wanting to contribute? Mm. How can we use narratives and storytelling to get more people engaged on the corporate level? Sure, we need, I mean, corporates need to be talking directly to their clients, mm -hmm. directly to their, you know, sort of customers, and there should be no middlemen, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at your client base, you need to be getting them to be telling mm -hmm. stories and help them distribute, mm -hmm. right? Because the one thing that we, that we on the activism side and the media side don't have is that, that really good distribution. Yeah. We need that, right? Mm -hmm. So we can tell the stories, we can help you distribute the stories and frame your story mm -hmm. as a corporation. We can do that with you, mm -hmm. but we need help. Yeah. But, so, how, so do we. But, it, but, but isn't it often a, a sort of uh, activists are a little bit angry at companies? Greenpeace are angry at Shell. Right. Well, and then when I meet people yeah. from Shell, they're like, well, people kind of like our products because to keep them warm and gets them to job and they can fly and they can do all kinds of things. But they don't like us. You know, so, right. so how, there are different kinds of activists, first of all. Um, we're not all angry. Uh, some of us are practical. But there is something to be said, right, for there's... When you listen to an activist, they are probably, they, there is a nugget of truth. And the activists and the corporations need to meet each other mm. on an equal playing field mm. and really listen to each other. And those are the stories that you should also be telling. Yeah. Like, how are you shaping your agenda related to what? They say this shouldn't be about fear. It should be stories about collaboration. Mm. And I can help you with that. Oh, so yes, you, you, uh, there's also a lot of companies that are interested in, in, in coming closer to the 
social entrepreneurs and non-profit sector, mm -hmm. seeing the opportunity in doing things together that are really cool. How, could, you, could you share some thoughts around that from, from Sime Social Impact? Well, a few, um, yesterday we talked to a lot of non-profits in our workshop about like, what, what, what they need. And, but then we also had some input from the companies. And one thing is that if you do decide to partner, when you do, allow there to be mistakes. Allow there to do a small, uh, if, even if you think huge, you should think huge. But try small projects and dare to go with your budget towards that, even if it is not successful, because you will learn and you will be successful later on. And even if it's, it's, it's really important to be, able, be, be allowed to try, because there, to there, have real impact in the end. Because I think there, there's, there's very few, at least, and I'm, you know, there are very few places where the uh, non-for-profit sector meets the corporate sector yeah. and yeah. discuss things like this, yeah. which is not structured in a strange way, like mm. somebody wants resources for yeah. something, mm. or somebody else wants to market and use somebody else's non-profit. I mean, there should be a different space for these discussions. We've been discussing yeah. this for a long yeah. time, and that's something that we're, we're going to try to create. Absolutely, and uh, I think that's exactly what we are referring to as, you know, open innovation. We need mm. to have a, a meeting space, um, and we're ha we say the word like innovation, I don't know, did someone count during Simon? <laughs> uh, like one billion times. Uh, and my belief is that uh, if you bring in uh, even other sectors, people with completely different skills, we're all talking about that cross-disciplinary talent and skills is, you know, needed for the future. So why not, you know? We, we have things to learn. It will be really, really exciting, I think. Make new friends, uh, solve challenges, and challenge us, you know? Uh, yeah. So we, we need challenges. that meeting place. We have, yeah, yeah, we have challenges every year at Sime Social Impact website, which we push that, that non-profit send in for Everybody here in the audience should solve if you want to. And if you do, the stage this is year. yours. Yeah, so next take year. on the challenges on Sime Social Impact. And if your company can help these nonprofits, because these do these these girls and guys do wonderful things. Things that if you're in the corporate world, you wish that you had more time to do. So if you don't have the time, at least help them solve their problems or mm -hmm. provide technology or wisdom or whatever mm -hmm. that you can provide. Uh, and I think that we've had uh, a lot of interesting challenges this year, but there is one that is going to get a prize. It is. The yearly Sime Social Impact Award. And this year we have a new partner, and that's Twitter that comes into the Nordics, and they start out by supporting a challenge uh, and by uh, giving us the opportunity to give a prize to somebody that impresses us. So shall we invite Josh? Let's do that. Josh, welcome back on stage. No, no, sit down. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm excited to do this. Uh, just a quick story before, before I start. So there was someone in the audience who was incredibly inspired by the story of the Kenyan village chief and the wayward cow. And I got a tweet after my presentation, a distressful tweet that she had lost her purse here at Syme. So I retweeted it, and 20 minutes later, she found it, and uh, she has her purse again. So I think that qualifies me to be the mayor of Stockholm. So <laughs> we'll vote for Josh. So that, that, was, that was actually pretty fun. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to be on stage once again. and. Um, and present this award. Um, a little bit of quick history about Twitter. So, you know, we're a, um, uh, gonna be a $1.3 billion revenue company this year. We have the world's largest brands, including Samsung, which is um, actually our top global partner on the platform. But going back to 2006, working with organizations to help them understand uh, using social for good has been part of Twitter's core. In fact, we have an arm of the business that's called Twitter for Good. And we work with organizations, most of them nonprofits, to show them best practices, to give them some tools, and also give them advertising grants so they can reach as many people as possible uh, to connect around important topics 
or in times of crisis, for instance, working with the Red Cross or, or working with um, national health organizations around uh, the current issues with mm -hmm. Ebola. So this is something that's near and dear to Twitter, so it makes perfect sense for us to get organized uh, and, and involved um, at this level here in the Nordics and in Sweden with, uh, with the SIME organization. So um, without further ado, I will... Um, I don't have a teleprompter, I have a telephone prompter, so forgive me while I, I read a little bit here, but um, the social impact jury uh, made the selection. Um, I was just sort of waiting in the wings to learn who it was going to be. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, the organization who is going to be the recipient of this year's 2014 Social Impact Challenge Award. So this is a dynamic and large organization who's working uh, with refugees, um, but they're stretched to their limits, um, as there are 231 million people on the move right now across the globe, and the situation is definitely not improving. Um, so this organization is looking to build a tool to create a deeper understanding, particularly in the Nordic region, um, of the experiences of these refugees. But they want to do this in a way that makes a closer connection and enables these refugees to tell their stories through their own voice, which, from my perspective, is exactly what Twitter is all about, really reaching every person on the planet and letting people tell their stories, just like you heard some really great ones this morning about people from all over, all over the world. Um, so really exciting organization. They've got some big ambitions and uh, looks like they were the favorite of the jury. So I'm very excited to announce that the 2014 SIME Social Impact Challenge Award goes to UNHCR. Congratulations. <laughs> These are really for me, anyway. To tell you the truth, when I woke up this morning, I did not expect to stand here and receive this amazing award. 51 million refugees in the world. We've never had that many since the Second World War. But it's not a figure. Every single one of them is a human being. And they have a story to tell. And they deserve to tell it themselves. Thank you so very much. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. 